Okay, welcome to all of you. As you know, uh, we are here with a very small team. We take one and a half meter distance and we, all, we are safe and we hope that you are all very safe at home. Um, during this little live tour, you are free to ask as many questions as you wish. And please, when you ask a question, let us know from where you are calling. Okay, this is a guided tour through the exhibition of Bertine van Maan and Friends, Beyond the Image. And you are standing here in the first room of the exhibition, which is, of course, a very funny room because you don't see anything well. As you know, photography is born through light, is the result of light. But it's also the effect that photography dies because of light. And we have a technical problem, so unfortunately we had to cover these photographs. Photographs that uh, come from a book, one of the books of Bertine van Maanen. Let's sit down before we go, a book uh, that she made about the former Soviet Union. But because you can't see anything, let's quickly move on to the second room. And let me explain you a little bit more about the backgrounds of this exhibition. Bertine van Maanen is a documentary photographer. Is a photographer who made a lot of travels who has been uh, making photographs since the late 70s, produced eight books, and is very well represented in our collection. This exhibition was born from the works in our collection, and, but we wanted to do something special with it. We wanted also to, to create relations between Bertine van Maanen's work and the collection, and photographers that she liked, or that she still likes, that she feels inspired by, that we that are also represented. Um, so, for example, in this room, we have one of her first series, photographs she made in the Appalachians since the 80s. And immediately you understand, when you look at these photographs, uh, the approach of Bertine van Maanen. The photographs are very informal. Um, you see that, the, that there's not really very balanced compositions Sometimes you see that the frame, uh, that the framing of the photographs is a bit rough. But you also see a lot of intimacy. You see Bertine van Maanen in interiors. Bertine van Maanen who is really with the people in their homes. She started this series because she was interested in mining. Uh, that's a part of her background. And she, she, uh, she went to the Appalachians to look for women uh, for female miners. And then she, she got into touch, into contact with families, um, with this boy here, and she started to get to know a lot of other families. And here you see how this little boy learns to shoot from his grandfather. So it's a bit uh, a rough and, uh, uh, yeah, sometimes poor. And, uh, um, the community of Bertin, with work by Chris Killip. Chris Killip, who photographed in the, in the 80s, in the north of England, where the deindustrialization uh, resulted in very tough social um, scenes, social, social results. And he made this, he turned this into a, a great book uh, from which you see here two photographs. But okay, so you have the books of Bertine and photographs from the books of others. But how can you translate to, uh, to an exhibition in a museum? Well, that's where a designer comes into, into the game. I mean, um, a curator creates a concept, there's a collection, there's a wonderful photographer with work, well, the big issue of an exhibition like this is, of course, the translation from photographs, from books, to a more spatial installation. And this is where you need a designer, and we could work with a wonderful designer, Jeroen de Vries, who helped us uh, with creating these spatial presentations. 
First of all, for every room, we defined a different way of hanging. So here, for the Appalachians, for example, you have a more family album way of hanging. But then, he suggested that the, the way you should talk about the relation between Bertine van Maanen and the photographer she admires or feel inspired by should be underlined by quotes, by, um, by what Bertine van Maanen really felt and thought about these photographers. So we interviewed her and she told us what she thought about different photographers, like here, the young Irish photographer Martin McGaugh. She says, for me, he produces images of a time, of a culture. They're very sober portraits, uh, but both the portraits of the boys and, and, and the portraits of nature um, have, a, have, a, have a kind of despondency, have a kind of, of tragic, tra tragic aura in them. And this is what I feel very strongly about, about his work. And then he decided to, to put these like the pages of a book coming out of the wall. But then he moved on, because one of the most famous series of Bertin is, of course, her series about the former Soviet Union. After the fall of the, uh, of the, of the wall, after the Soviet Union um, got more open, she went there for a number of years and, and several times, a lot of times, but not to photograph the big political events. No, like she did in the Appalachians, she went into people's homes and she, she lived with people. She ate, slept, traveled with people and she photographed very different aspects of their lives. These photographs of, of the former Soviet Union, this little house, uh, with it, which is, of course, a beautiful reference to the fact that Bertin always photographs in, in homes. Um, I can take as an example these three photographs where you see the different aspects she, she, uh, she gives attention to. Like here, this girl that's dressed in, in a way her, her former family, her family was dressed in, in Tsarist times. And next to her, you see three youngsters uh, enjoying their freedom, their newfound freedom, their post-Soviet free freedom in a restaurant, the, the, the young nouveau riche. And next to them you see a young boy, an Armenian boy, with photographs of family members who were killed in, in the war with Azerbaijan. These photographs were combined in this room with photographs by the um, Ukrainian photographer Boris Mikhailov. And you see two scenes of homeless people in his town in Kharkov. Um, Mikhailov is furious about what happened to the homeless, to the poor people, after the decline of the Soviet Union, people getting poorer and poorer. And he, he photographs these homeless, he knows them very well, in a kind of staged settings. And the interesting thing is about this combination is that Bertin, of course, is in a way an outsider who, who traveled a lot and who got to know a lot of people. And, and Boris Mikhailov is an insider. And at first, he was rather critical about Bertin's work. He thought, well, this is again one of these um, Western Europeans coming to, to romanticize our poverty. And Bertin had problems with the roughness and the directness of, of Mikhailov's photographs. But um, after, after some time, they got to know each other very well and, and, and began to appreciate each other's positions. And Mikhailov completely acknowledges the worth of Bertin's work and Bertin acknowledges the work of, of, of Mikhailov. And it's very interesting to counterbalance these two approaches. Well, let's have a, a quick look through this beautiful little house and look at the, the intimacy of the images of Bertin in different parts of, of, of Russia, in Siberia and Kazakhstan, uh, former Russian, former Soviet republics. Where you see, of course, details referring to the old Soviet past, um, but also scenes of intimacy and, and poverty and the, the, yeah, the interiors of, of Russian homes, newfound technology here. Uh, the, she, of course, has a special attention always to women because 
And you can always sh come closer to women than to men, especially as a female photographer, and, uh, like this beautiful scene here. This is one of um, Bertine's favorite photographs. She said, I photographed a lot in railway stations, and this is a woman waiting for hours on a train in a railway station, and it's so, so strange how the, what you see through the window is almost like a painting, and how the colors are also almost the, the colors of a painting. And as you will note, this is the first series Bertine made in color before she photographed in, in black and white. In the Appalachians, she sometimes photographed in color, but from this Russian work onwards, she only photographed in, in color. This series was called A Hundred Summers, A Hundred Winters. Every book of Bertine has a very beautiful poetic title, and this refers to the fact that after, when you see your friends again after a long time, uh, you sit down and you, you meet them again, and they say, oh, it was a hundred summers and a hundred winters ago that I last saw you. So this is the title of this book. <laughs> and the next book, uh, the next uh, book she made, um, or the next room, um, refers to, a, to another book by Bertine that's called um, Give Me Your Image. At first it was a commission. She was asked to, to work with... Uh, with uh, and she decided to go to different capitals, to different cities in, in Europe and make photographs in interiors with people who had moved from other countries. And what she did was she took, she asked them for a, for a special photograph or for a book of a book or of their collection and placed it somewhere in a room where it could get a significance, sometimes a more um, political significance, like this reference to the time of a, a, a nice uh, vision. I'm referring to travels. So in many different ways, she, she worked with the notion of... Um, of photographs as keepers of, of memory. And in this room, we combined her work with the work of a young Nigerian photographer. Um, and this is, a, yeah, in a way, a very moving, tragic work. It's about the girls that were kidnapped, um, held host, hostage, by Boko Haram in Nigeria, in the north of Nigeria, and then came back to the villages and to their schools again. And what she does is, is she, films in a, she films their present life, um, but also refers sometimes in text to the fears they have and to the, uh, to the, to the difficult time they had during the war. And, and during the time they were held hostage. But they also play, they play, they, they play, they interact with, with each other. And for Bertine, it was um, moving to see how playful uh, she could photograph, she could film these tragic experiences. This room is in a way about women, about, um, uh, yeah, about the freedom or the, the non-freedom women have in different cultures. In the beginning, uh, now in the late 90s, Bertine went to China. And China was opening up a bit. And she was interested in finding out how young people reacted to this new freedom. If, they, if the West would be like a kind of example, if they would have more possibilities, if they would... They're, they're, their way of consuming would, would be different, their way of partying, their way of behaving in the streets. And one of the photographs she took was of this young woman, a uh, student, Tao. And what you see here is the fact that <laughs> she's a student in university, and this is all the private space she has. She sits on a bed behind a little curtain, and you see some of her belongings behind her, and this is all the private space she can get in this country. And we combine this with the work of a, an Iranian magnum photographer, Nusha Tavakolian, a very 
good uh, photographer who works with Magnum and made wonderful series about um, female fighters, female Kurdish fighters, about the war in um, the war in Iraq. But she also made this work about female Iranian singers. And since the late 70s revolution, it's forbidden for women, for female singers, to sing in public. So these women sing, but you can't hear them because they're not allowed. So uh, we combine this because it was in, well, a reference to space, to personal space, to personal freedom. And Bertin says, well, this is very moving, this project, because it's beautiful how she depicts repression in a very simple but also very effective way. And this is, well, one of the, the rooms a lot of our audience prefers, a very lively room with projections of the China work, with Chinese music by a friend of, uh, of Bertin's, and you see, well, it's just simple. You see the life of young people, mainly young people in, 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 in China. And what's, again, uh, what I told you at the, in the room with the Appalachians, Bertin is not a photographer who stages work. She works with very simple cameras. She works in color, in simple cameras. She doesn't care if a photograph is always very straight or very uh, formally composed. She tries to catch life as directly as possible and she tries to be uh, with people as much as possible. And what's fascinating is that she, well, she gets a lot of trust of people. People trust her. People give her a lot when they are with her. And that's how she manages to, to create these wonderful, endearing images. As I, um, as I said before, the the exhibition is not chronological. Um, so now, in a way, we are diving a little bit into Bertin's past. This is also a book, like every room is in a way a book. This book is Easter and Oak Trees. What's Easter and Oak Trees? It's a reference to, um, to holidays uh, Bertin and her family spent in the 70s um, on an estate of one of her, of her family. And Bertine wasn't a photographer yet, but she photographed her children and her husband, and her husband photographed her in a very lively um, and, and, and official way. And it's very nice to see how this 70s atmosphere um, jumps of these photographs. Huh? Little boy who plays with, an, with a beer bottle or even uh, smokes a so-called cigarette. And the, the freedom they have, the, they, are, they are playing without clothes, nude in, in nature. And one way or another, her son remembered these photographs and said, but Bertine, you should do something with these photographs. And she turned them into this book, Easter and Oak Trees, that's in a way an ode to youth. And for me, this work has also an importance because in between, in between this book and let's say the Russian book, uh, the Russian work and the Chinese work, she, she often worked as a more classic photographer, as a more formal classic photographer. And I think that later she rediscovered in a sense the freedom and the directness of these early family photographs. In this room, we combine them with other images of youth, um, like this photograph of a famous series by Rineke Dijkstra, her, 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 her photographs of young people at this, near the sea that also show the, well, uh, the, um, the vulnerability of, of young people, and work by Czech photographer Jitka Hanslova, photographer Bertin likes very much. She photographed her hometown, her home village, going back to, Czech, uh, to Czechia after a long time in Germany, and photographed them really as small, little, little jewels uh, yeah, of childhood memory, of childhood innocence and memory. And Bertin, um, well, 
thought of them as a kind of embroidery of, of very refined craftsmanship and uh, Yitka is very precise in her coloring and in her composing of images. So these two next rooms are the really early period of Bertin. This room about women, <laughs> two groups, two groups of women, one the nuns in the south of, of the Netherlands. Bertin herself was uh, raised in a Catholic boarding school for, for a number of years. So she knew that culture very well. And another book she made was, is very different on female, on the, the wives of what we called guest workers in the 80s. So Turkish and Moroccan women who were brought here by their husbands and then lived often in not very, very um, well-to-do circumstances and isolated. And by these photographs, through these photographs, she, she gave attention to these women and it helped in a sense. It became also in the Netherlands an issue. And this also, uh, this also accounts for the fact that Bertin always uh, was able to go into people's houses to get their, their, their trust. And this is something she recognizes also in Czech photographer Josef Kudelka, who for a number of years in the 60s and 70s photographed Roma all over Europe and also lived with them and, and, uh, and was part of their, of their, of their, yeah, their daily life. And this is something that's very important for Bertin, and I think it's important for all the combinations that you could say that every photographer you see other than Bertin in these rooms tells something also about what Bertin is aiming at, what she likes, but also, also what's part of her work. So the fact that Kudelka lived with people, which is something Bertin also did, the fact that you, that you are uh, able to photograph the vulnerability, something also Bettine is aiming for. And in the following room we will see work by Robert Frank and for Bertine, Robert Frank was the photographer who, uh, who makes work that, that gives you the idea, the feeling that there is no camera, that you are immediately confronted with a scene from reality, that there is no in between, there is no mediation, there is nothing between you and the, and the scene represented. And that's something she was working in the, in the, in the 70s as a fashion photographer, Bertine was. And, but when she saw the work of, of Robert Frank, she realized she had to do something else. That she had to get away from this formal and, and, and constrained uh, approach to photographic images. And then she went to to Budapest in Hungary and for some time photographed. And this is really very early work and it still doesn't have the liveliness of her later work, but it's interesting to see how she really tried, huh? she, she wasn't going inside, it's, it's kind of street photography, which is rather uh, strange for Bertin. Huh? She's always inside houses, inside homes, and there you have street photographs. Um, but it's an, an, an interesting step in, in the development of her, of her work. And this is a funny photograph where you see these women carrying, carrying uh, big buckets and, and with these huge shoes they have to, that were, uh, as Bertin says, uh, omnipresent everywhere in, in, in uh, Budapest. This work, by the way, is called um, um, I Will Be Wolf. And it's, it's again a very poetic title, and this time it really refers to a poem, a poem where the, 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 the poet speaks of um, people behaving like sheep, and, but uh, in fact, uh, this, behind this sheep, this, this sheepish attitude, they are wolves. And she said that this was something that she felt inside the, the Hungarian population that time. Well, the last two rooms are, have to do with, both have to do with family. This is like a family album. Bertin photographed in the 90s the five men, in the 90s and in 2000s, the five men that are important in her life. Her father, 
her son, her friend, and her husband, and in the end also her, her grandson. So this is really a family, a family album. But it's also, um, it's also an image of things you take for granted. And you won't look at them anymore because they're always there. They're people that you, that you know very well. And we, we combine them with the work of um, Guido Guidi, an Italian photographer, who, who also gives, puts attention to things you could go unnoticed. You wouldn't see if it were not a photographer who sees them for you, like the beautiful way this light falls, or like the, the mist in, in, in a landscape, and the, the, how the pole divides and structures this landscape. Um, somebody wants to know um, if um, uh, Bertika Mane did choose her uh, photographers herself, the other photographers in the exhibition, did she choose them? Yes, in general Bertine chose all the photographers herself, yes, yes. And sometimes, mostly from the collection, but um, uh, sometimes uh, there was a photographer that was not, uh, who was not uh, represented in the collection, that we chose to, to show uh, him to. Like in the first room that unfortunately we couldn't see, uh, Stephen Gill, <laughs> who's a very interesting photographer and made a beautiful book about uh, birds. <laughs> he sets a pole in the landscape and then he, he photographs all the, the, the birds that, uh, that jump or that, that, um, that, uh, that come down on that pole. So it's a kind of, of, of yeah, um, uh, and common but also non-decided situations that, that, he, that he photographs. And this is again Bertine, who knows Stephen Gill very well. Stephen Gill helped her also with, with uh, several books because he's not interested in, in formal beauty, but like Bertine, uh, uses sometimes... Um, um, uh, and sharpness, uh, compositions that are a bit strange or, or uh, rough. Um, so he, he helps her in a way to, to make her choices even more lively and less formal than you would, uh, than she, than you would maybe expect them to be. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is the last room of the exhibition. Unfortunately, also with some of the images covered, Nen Goldin, Seichi Furuya, photographers both uh, represented by the collection, both photographers Bertin is really fond of, and they were combined with, um, with another book that's related to, to, to Bertin's personal history, Beyond Maps and Atlases. It's a book she made, or a body of work she made, after the death of her husband. And she was just wondering, uh, where, where, where would he go? Where would he be? And that's why she went to, to Ireland, far away, um, with a view on the ocean, um, and, and photographed mainly, but not only, mainly landscapes, which is, of course, strange in Bertin's work. It's always about people, about people in their interiors. <laughs> and now funnily we have, this is always the case, and when you tell something, funnily we have people here, but in general you will see when you see, look at the book there, there, were, there are um, a lot of landscapes, empty landscapes, so the book is like an elegy, like a mourning of, of the death of her husband. Yes, yeah. Photographs are covered. Um, maybe they missed the beginning, so maybe mm -hmm. you can explain once more. And um, they want to know if, if they will be uncovered well, once the exhibition will open again. Mm -hmm. um, the photographs are covered, like I said in the beginning, that photographs think, uh, yeah, exist thanks to light, but are also easily damaged by light, especially color photographs disappear. I mean, with the new techniques, fortunately. They have a little longer life, but classic sea prints 
become red and, and, and disappear, slowly disappear. And because there's a lot of light now and there's nobody in the exhibition, the first room has been covered because of um, <laughs> because there's a light technical problem, so there's too much light, and here there's light coming in from the hall. But normally when the exhibition is open, of course you can see you can see the works. And can we get a sneak peek right now for <laughs> Well, I don't know, Nan Goldin, if we can, yeah, this one, we can with this one because it's hanging loose. So this is a photograph from a series she made about her friend, Cookie Muller. We have the, the cookie portfolio. And as you know, um, Nan Goldin always photographs her, herself, her own friends and their lives. And in the 80s, she photographed them, she made slide projections that she then, in the evening, showed in clubs together with music. And one of her biggest friends was Cookie Muller, this is not Cookie Muller, this is another one, and she made, um, she made um, a portfolio about Cookie Muller. She was a, an actress, a writer, a journalist, a very famous and lively person who unfortunately died of AIDS. So she made this whole portfolio as an homage to, to Cookie Muller. And we, ha we bought the, 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 whole, the whole portfolio. And I'm very proud to be able to present some of these photographs. But again, when you, will, when you will come in the exhibition a little later, you will see other photographs. Because they are color, we have to change them. So we have to change sometimes the, the photographs, also of, of Russia, because they, they could easily be damaged after three or four months. So to, to keep them longer alive, we need to, um, well, to do that. <laughs> okay, I hope you have enjoyed this little tour, but you, you can still see it if you want, or see, look at it again if you want, on our YouTube channel, on Facebook. And if you uh, want to be informed about other online uh, specialties of this uh, of our our museum then please look at the newsletter and you can find a link in bio so thank you for your attention